Hey guys, it's Ollie from the Drama Hub, and this is a start of the mini series which is making a po the game Pong in Java. And in case you don't know what Pong is, it's basically a game in which you bat a ball left and right across the screen, and if you miss the ball, the opponent gets a point, and vice versa. So we to start out go to the JavaHub.net slash forums and download the class main.java and bool.java and as you can see I've created the class nice and neatly and in case you don't know what this means it simply refers to the super class which is our JFrame and you don't have to put this here but it's just um, good practice really and you can also see I've done something new that we haven't seen before which is a dimension and I've created a new dimension object called screen size and the dimension takes two parameters which is a width and a height which I've done and then, as you can see, I've set the size to that dimension. Simple enough. So when you press run, you'll see this screen appears here. And I'm actually just going to make it a bit smaller. So I'm going to make it 300 by 400. Or 400 by 300, rather. And in this window, we'll be creating our Pong game. I recommend that you make the game bigger. It's just because I am I need to keep this game inside the screen recorder. So now that we've done this, we're going to go into our ball method here, or ball class, don't know why I said method. And as you can see, I've already got my run, which is going to, we're going to be doing threads, and I'm going to add the while true before I forget. I forgot that the other day, and I was stuck for ages trying to figure out where my program wouldn't run. But anyways, in our global variables, we need to think what does our ball need. Well, our ball needs an X and a Y location and it's going to be moving up, down, left and right randomly, bouncing off the walls. So it's going to need an X direction and a Y direction. And when it hit the ball hits the top or the bottom, it's going to switch the Y direction. And when it reaches the left or the right, it's going to switch um, the X direction. So we're going to create int X, Y, and also X direction and Y direction. And then we're going to create a constructor, public ball. And this is going to take int x and int y. And then I'm going to say this.x is equal to x. And this.y is equal to y. And what this, the keyword this means, is this.x, which refers to this variable here, equals x. And this x on its own is referring to what the user enters in. And that's just to keep it, keep avoid confusion. And... Now what we want to do is we want to make methods, we're going to be adding something in here, I'm going to add a comment, set ball moving randomly, and we'll be doing that later, but for now we're going to make a set x direction and set y direction methods, and that's public void set x direction, and it's going to take an integer which will be the x direction to set it to, and we're going to say x direction equals x dir which is what the user enters in and we're gonna copy this and paste it and change everything to Y and now that that's done we're going to set the ball moving randomly so we need to say random which is an instance of the random class and then we'll call it R equals new random and now we need to import this util.random and the random is used because we're going to be getting a random number and we're going to be making we're going to be setting the x direction to minus 1 or plus 1 and depending which it is it will move it will begin to move left or right or up and down completely randomly and we're going to say an integer called um r dir, dir for random direction that's equal to our random object dot next int and I have a beginner's tutorial on random numbers if you don't know what I'm doing here and we need to set the value of 0 to what ran what sorry in other words we want our random number to be between 0 and what and we want it to be 0 and 1 so we're gonna make it either it's gonna either be 1 or 0 and we're gonna say if our dir equals 0 then we're going to say rdir minus 1 and that's going to make it or rather plus minus 1 
or we don't even need to do that, we can just say minus minus, and that's going to make it so instead of it being 0, it's going to be minus 1, and then we're going to say set x direction to r dir, and then I'm literally going to copy this and then paste it, and I'm going to change this to set y direction, and I'm going to name this y dir y r d i r and that's that so basically what we're doing is we're making a new random number that's either going to be 0 or 1 and if it's 0 we'll just minus 1 from it to make it minus 1 and then that means it's going to set the x direction to 1 or minus 1 and it's going to set the y direction to minus 1 or 1 and that's going to set the ball bouncing off in a random direction so first or rather now we create a method to draw our ball to the screen and it's not actually going to be a ball, I'll confess that now, it's going to be a square because we're going to be using the rectangle intersects method um, for good collision detection. I did devise a simple uh, maths equation for the ball to do it, but it's not very accurate. So we'll just be using rectangles and draw is going to take graphics G, which we import. And then we're going to say G dot fill rectangle and before we do this we need a rectangle to be our ball inverted commas so rectangle which we import rectangle ball equals new rectangle and our ball is going to be um x and or or rather we won't initialize it yet and in our constructor at the end, we're going to say create, we're going to make a comment, create um, create the ball in inverted commas, and we're going to say ball is equal to a new rectangle, which is at x and y, and that's going to be this dot x and this dot y, to make sure we're referring to these, to make sure we're referring to these and not these. And then we are going to say 15 by 15 as the width and the height. And in our draw method, we can say fill rectangle is ball.x, ball.y, ball.width, and ball.height. And that needs to be a full stop, not a comma. And we'll set the color, g.setColor, and our ball is going to be blue. Or let's make it white, actually, and we're going to have a black background. And now we're going to implement double buffering in our main thing, in our main class. And we need an image called double buffer image and graphics called double buffer graphics. And now we can implement a paint method public void paint graphics g and then we can override this from the main jframe superclass and let's see double buffer image equals create image and I'm actually going to pause the video while I do this and as you can see I've just implemented double buffering we've done this before in a previous tutorial um, you look it up if you want to know what it means and what it does and now we're going to make our draw method public void draw and you'll notice I'm calling it draw whereas I usually call it paint component and the truth is it doesn't matter what you call it you could call it anything you want really um now we're going to let's see we're going to make a new object of our ball and it's the only object we need to make in our main class because we are going to be accessing the paddles through the ball class and you'll see why later on. So I'm going to say ball b equals new ball, and we need to give it an x and a y. Let's see where's nicely in the center of the screen. Um, I'm going to say 200. I'm going to say 193 by 143. And that's basically like minus 7, minus 7, which is nearly the center of our 15 ball. 
and in our draw we're going to say be 